scale setup and calibration. How do we do that for the first time? So once you're out, you've got the scale all installed, you've got the integrator powered up, where do we go from there? Well, the um, great starting point we have is called the setup wizard. So you can just hit the main menu, go into the setup wizard, and it will literally walk you through every parameter that you need to enter step by step by step from start to finish. It's a great way to do it. Um, it's also a longer way to do it. I never use it just because I, I jump into the values that I want to change on the fly. They're all located in what we call scale setup. It's similar, but it just is a list of all these parameters. So we've got load cell size, that's the capacity of the scale. Um, you can decide what units, if it's going to be metric or English units. Conveyor angle, do we have an angle sensor or not? Or I can I can just enter an angle in there if I don't have an angle sensor. Idler spacing measurement, 48 inches, 36 inches, whatever it is. Um, the speed sensor, usually that's default. So if we enter all this stuff in, we can enter it in pretty quickly, and now the scale is ready to be calibrated. Um, if we mess up some of this information, We'll find out pretty quickly because the scale of you know calibration value, the trim factor will be way, way off from what we expect. So we can come back around and be like, oh yeah, sorry, I it, it's actually a 200 kilogram scale and not a 100 kilogram. You can easily change those values in the scale setup section. Um, when we are starting out, the first thing we have to do is establish the length of the belt. So we do that with our length and zero process. So generally what happens here is you've got to put a mark on the belt. You get that belt running empty. You enter into the length and zero, and then it tells you, okay, wait for that mark to show up. It gets to you. You hit enter on the integrator to start measuring the belt. And then you let that mark, the belt go all the way around one revolution. It gets back to the same spot. You hit enter again. That stops the length measurement and we save that. And now we know the length of the belt. We don't have to measure it ever again, unless they make a really big change to the length. Um, so that's real simple. And that length and zero process also weighs the empty belt, which leads right into our zero calibration. We, the zero calibration is, it's just like any platform. The empty belt is our platform. It just happens to be moving. We have to measure it while it's moving. And we just take an average of readings for that entire belt length and come up with an average zero value. So that's super important. And we can tell a lot from that zero. We kind of know where it should be. Maybe it's like, should be 100 pounds or 80 pounds or 120 pounds. If it's way too high or low, we can quickly see, yeah, they've got a problem with the load cell or something's going on with the scale. That zero is very important. And that zero calibration, which is just that process of reweighing that empty belt, we're not measuring the length again, but we're just reweighing the belt now. Uh, that's important. We need to do that consistently. It needs to be done frequently every day if we can. That zero value can change. Um, so that's something that we try to hammer home with the operators and the, the users. Make sure you're paying attention to that zero calibration. If the belt's adding or subtracting weight when it's running empty, you've got to repeat that zero calibration. And finally, the trim factor calibration, that's where we add the test weights. Or we're going to do a material test and compare it to a truck scale. Uh, that's what makes the scale accurate. So we've established a good zero. Now we're going to try to, um, well, actually here, we'll, we'll show the zero calibration real quick. All we do is we get that belt running empty, we hit the zero cal button on the keypad, and it's a short process, and then simply you hit enter to accept it. So here we, we show the scale was sustaining a negative 18 tons per hour. Now, if you were seeing this in real time, that 2.3 would fairly rapidly be decreasing. And one good thing you that's it's good to do is increase the number of decimal places on this main screen just so you can see it a little bit easier if it's going negative all the time or adding all the time when the belt's running empty if it's doing that you need to do a new zero calibration uh, if that rate bounces around a lot but the weight doesn't change that much then you're probably okay but if it's sustaining like in this case a negative 18 you do that zero calibration, that's going to fix it. 
Now on the bottom right, we've saved that new zero and it's sitting there right at zero. Well, it'll never, you know, usually won't sit right at zero tons per hour. It should hover up and down a little bit. You know, a heavier part comes across and then a lighter part of the belt comes across and it should average out over the course of one revolution. And that's why having more decimal places being more spots beyond the decimal being shown gives you that zoomed in look of how much weight is being accumulated on the scale. So after you do a zero calibration, you know, you should see that number jump up, jump back down, jump up, jump back down. But we should not be accumulating weight or subtracting weight consistently it should just hover right around that same number for a good zero calibration. Yep. And one other caveat we put on here, sometimes for really short belts, when I say short, maybe it's like 30, 40, 50 foot belts that are moving really fast. We don't, so we're not sampling the belt, you know, very much because it's going so fast. Sometimes we'll fool the scale into thinking that belt is actually a lot longer and we'll increase the belt length by two or three times. Then we maybe we'll take two or three samples of the belt and that can smooth that average of the zero out a little bit by doing that. And with a fast moving belt, it really doesn't take that much. It maybe it increases the time from 10 seconds to 15 or 20 seconds for, for a revolution. Everybody can handle wait an extra 10 seconds if it's gonna make it a little bit more stable. Um, so now we've established a really good zero. We're ready to, to put some test weights on this thing. So the left picture kind of shows, hey, you got to shove a bar. There's a spot, a hole where a bar will, will go through and then you can hang some weights, whether there are cylindrical weights or hand weights or whatever. We don't really care that much about the kind of weight, but we want to know how much weight it is and how much that bar weighs. Now, many times we run into a case where a guy will call in and he doesn't know how, he's got a bar of some kind, he doesn't know how much it weighs. We can just shove the bar in first, do a zero calibration, and that will zero off that bar. Then we're left, we can hang the weights on. We'll see only the good known weight on that bar. And of course, on the right side here, we've got the same uh, self-storing weights that we just looked at on our testing. So the same thing applies there. You'll zero it with it to the left, flip the weights over. We do need to put in the in that case, we do need to put in the entire weight of that unit that we're expecting. So once we have the weights on there, we're gonna get the belt running empty and we're gonna enter in that information. So we go into the test weight calibration procedure here and we're saying, hey, okay, we've got 100 pounds on the scale. Let's hit enter, we start the process. We do, I think it's about three revolutions of the belt for test weight calibration. So it goes a little longer than the, than the zero calibration. But at the end, it will tell you the trim factor, the trim value is 1.000, for example, for starting with a brand new scale. And the new trim factor is 1.033. So we changed it by about 3%. So, okay, I mean, that sounds good. That's pretty close. If, if we get a small change like that on scale, it's usually fine. It seems really good. Um, but if for some reason you don't get a really good result in the trim factor, if, if it changes by a lot more or less than you think it should, then you need to go look at our live weight screen. So that's under the main menu, totals and diagnostics, live weight. That shows the actual weight that the, the load cells are feeling at any instant. So if it doesn't show close to your test weight amount on there, then you gotta start looking at some issues like mechanical issues, I mean, did we put the right amount of weight on there? Is the bar hitting the frame? Is there some other problem? Do we have a problem with load cells? So if we don't read the right amount of weight there, then we gotta start hunting for a reason because the scale won't be calibrated properly if we're not correctly feeling those weights. Just like on any other scale, if your test weights you know, are, are messed up or you didn't put on there properly or whatever, you know, we have to rectify that before we're gonna get a good calibration. Um, but if everything looks fine, if the trim factor comes back close to one and uh, our, you know, test weights are registering properly on the live weight screen, then the final verification here is we can look at, we can calculate what that tons per hour should be with this little formula here. Um, and 
So basically 100 pounds, we have four foot spacing on this belt. Let's say it was going 300 feet per minute, times 60 divided by 2000, that equals 225 tons per hour. The scale should be showing to about 225 tons per hour when you had your 100 pounds of weight on it. So that's really good. And the nice part about this is after you calibrate this the first time, if you come back next month or next year or whatever, you can just put your weights on there first and just start running the belt, assuming you've got a good zero calibration. And if you put your weights on and you see that exact same 225 tons per hour, you technically don't even need to recalibrate the scale because nothing's changed. You, that's a verification instead of a calibration. Now, if it's reading like 220 tons per hour, where it should be 225, yeah, go ahead and proceed with the calibration you know, to tweak it in a little bit better than it was. Something's changed a little bit, obviously, but if it's bang on 225 tons an hour, you're done. Yank your weights off and, and go home. So no need to do anything else. Um, so aside from the test weight calibration, we've got the material test, which is definitely the best calibration if you can do it. Uh, the test weight's really simple, fast, it'll get you pretty close, but there are issues with test weights in general, just because like we talked about, with most static scales, you're putting your weights directly on your platform, right? Truck scale, you're gonna load, bring the test truck across, or you're gonna load weights on it, or whatever, you're right on the platform. With belt scale, unfortunately, the weights do not go on top of the platform. They go underneath of the platform, which is the belt. So it sometimes the belt can throw the calibration off. If it's really tight or whatever, there's some, some issues there. The scale might be working perfectly with the test weights, but the belt condition is such that it's throwing it off a little bit. So enter the material test. That's the best way to do it. The material, live material running on the belt, will incorporate all those variables, all those issues, and make the calibration work. Now, we have to be careful with the test weight, I mean, the material test calibration. You have to do it properly. You do not want to make an adjustment after just one. Uh, one truckload, for example. So in this table, I've got an example here. We've, we've got one, it was way, way off. But luckily, we did three more. And we see like, well, it's very repeatable now for the next three. I don't know what happened with that first one. Something was really wrong. Uh, I don't really care that much about it. We'll just throw it out because we have three good ones in a row. And they're very, very repeatable. What we're looking for is I don't care that it's negative. It's fine that it's negative. I just want to know that it's negative three times in a row or positive three times in a row, and they're all very close. There's not a big difference from one to the next. That's a really repeatable result. So we're going to go with that. We're going to say, yeah, that sounds great. We can get rid of that you know, negative 4% error or whatever we see there uh, by making an adjustment. So we've added up in this formula here, we just take the truck scale weight divided by the belt scale weight and times by the current trim factor, that gives us the new trim factor. That's how the math works. Now, luckily, you don't actually have to do that math if you don't want. Uh, you just go into our material test calibration. You enter in that belt scale weight, you add it up, and that certified weight, you add it up, and we do the math for you. And at the end, we come out with that difference. So what that means is we change the trim from 1.000 to 1.042. That's literally a 4.2% change, the belt scale will weigh 4% heavier than it did before and make up that difference with the truck scale. Now, if you do another test after this, you're gonna be very, very close. Uh, now, the important thing to remember is a lot of people ask, well, they get it close and they call them like, well, how do I get it closer? Well, sometimes these guys are you know, 50 pounds off. We can't get much closer than that. I mean, again, remember, half to 1%. If you do repeatable test loads and you're within 1% every time, stop doing the loads and tell the customer it's calibrated. Plus or minus 1% is as good as you're gonna get. If you're better, that's great. If it's you know 0.99% every time, you're within a percent. You know It's as close as we're, we expect it to be. So, um, but that's simple as that. We just wanna make sure it's repeatable. 
before you make any of these changes. You could do these tests all day long, and if there's something wrong with the scale, the angle sensor's bad, uh, load cell's bad, whatever it is, you do tests all day long and they'll, they'll never work. You have to make sure you're to the position to the scales working properly, you get repeatable results, and then make an adjustment. 